guys, welcome to the fourth video um, of Let's Learn C Sharp. Um, this is a sort of special video um, because instead of going through videos on how to program like this, uh, we're going to start making a game. Um, it's going to be a first person physics based uh, puzzle game. And if you've seen videos of the game called Cube, um, it's going to be uh, in that general um, play style. And um, basically what it is, is you interact with objects and just to get from one area to another. And um, yeah, so... All, this is a new scene. Um, all I have in here is a cube that I put from 250 on the X and 250 on the Z for scale in the transform. And, um, oops. And, uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to put this texture on here. Actually, I'll put the blue one on. Um, I'll have a download for all of the textures um, in the uh, description. So, anyways, uh, for the tiling, X is going to be 512, and the Y will be 512 also. And now, if we zoom in, um, you'll see that it's all tiled up. So, I'm just going to drag and drop the first person um, uh, controller from the standard assets into here. And, oops, got to put it a little higher. And now if we, if we play, we have a basic scene with a texture. So, I'm going to go to game object create other and I'm gonna put a point light and I'll put the range way up um, and then I'm gonna put this up put the range to a bit more a little higher and put the intensity up drag it up a little more And that seems good. So let's press play. And um, yeah, this is looking good so far. So inside of the first person controller, I'm going to create an empty object, empty, empty game object. And I'm going to call this cube spawner. And drag and drop the scripts we made last time, and then put the um, cube that we made also in the last video. And instead of the blue texture on it, um, I'm going to put a... Oops. a uh, orange texture on it so let's just look at it um, oops uh, put the tile in the 512 also on here <coughs> all right and I'm not sure if that will look good. Where is it? Alright, so yeah, everything's so small, so I'll just keep that at one and one. And now I'm gonna drag and drop that on the prefab. And then put the prefab in the game object field. So, now we have one problem, 
Um, if we press play and spawn a cube, it will spawn us inside of the cube, or it'll spawn the cube inside of us, and we can't move around it, and generally we don't want that, so, um, to fix that, we just look at where the camera's facing, and we put the game object in front of there, so that should be good. Alright, that's good. So, um, instead of calling this tutorial, um, I'm gonna name this scripts. And I put the underscore there, so it's the first thing up there. And I'm gonna make a new folder called textures. And I'm going to place all of these inside of the textures folder and a scenes folder. And I'm going to save this scene. I'm going to call this uh, puzzle game. <clears throat> and put that into the scenes folder so um inside of the scripts folder um i'm going to oh wait my bad uh one more folder called prefabs and drag and drop the prefab in there and inside of here, we're going to create a new C Sharp script and call this Crosshair. Um, and then I'm going to open this in Visual Studio. Don't know why that's taking so long. But, anyways, um,. This isn't going to be no advanced uh, crosshair. It's going to be plain out simple crosshair. Um, in the future, though, um, if you guys want an, a dynamic crosshair, uh, I'll implement that and see how you guys like it. So, we're going to make the on GUI function. And inside of here, you're just going to do GUI.box, new rect, screen.width divided by 2, screen.height divided by 2, and 1 pixel by 1 pixel, and there will be nothing in it, and this is all it is. So, again, this is nothing um, advanced, it's completely basic, and it's what I'll be using for now. Um, so if we press play, there's a crosshair right in the middle. Um, and uh, I guess we could do some level design for now. Um, so, I'm going to create another empty game object, call this, um, what should I call this, I guess I'll call it objects, um, I'm going to create a cube, and going to make this kind of high, skinny, um, 
make sure that's touching. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's not touching the ground because we won't ever see that at all. Um, and it's going to be long. And then let's just place this inside of the objects and copy and paste that. And if you hear screaming in the background, just ignore it. Um, it's annoying, I know, but whatever. Um, gonna name these wall. And um, I'm gonna put a green texture on them. Um, and I will put the tiling of 512 to 512, see how that looks. Let's press play. Alright, everything is really small. So, let's put this to about 250 by 250. See how that looks? Again, pretty small. So, let's make this 20 by 20, I guess. See what it looks like. Fifty by fifty or fifty by thirty. Twenty five. Fifty by fifty. leave those at zero. Um, let's press play. I'm gonna pause that. Alright, so 50 by 15 looks alright. Um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and inside of prefabs, I'm going to create a prefab and call it wall. And I'm going to drag and drop that onto that. And delete that. And place this inside of here. And drag that into the object. And that's good so far. I um, guess we can make some stairs then now. So create another cube. Oops. Actually, not stairs yet. Um, we're going to texture up an interactive object. So, basically, all that is is I'm just going to put it as a red texture. So, interactive object. 
and in the prefabs, I'm going to call this interactive object. And drag that and drop it. Um, so this is all for this video. Um, I'm sorry if it was boring, but uh, just trying to get some things done. And uh, next video, we are going to put a um, certain amount of cubes that are allowed to be placed and we're gonna get rid of that um, well we're gonna get rid of the button maybe and we're gonna get rid of um, the time scale because it's kind of useless so uh, rate comment and subscribe and see ya